name's Patrick Collier, like Jerry mentioned. I started out at Air Force Research Labs uh, working on um, Space VPX, which is a, an enhanced version of OpenVPX for satellites and other types of space platforms. Um, I founded the effort with a gentleman from um, Jet Propulsion Labs. Um, after that, I migrated over to NavAir, and now I'm going to talk to you guys about a couple of things that we're working on. Um, one is called HOST, which is a hardware open systems technology effort at NavAir. NavAir is an acquisition house, so I don't know if anybody's familiar with it, but it's all about the program, it's all about getting it on contract and getting it out to the warfighter. So this is one piece of a whole architecture that's being developed. The other presentation, which I'll talk about afterwards, is something called SOSA, which actually I, I founded with a friend of mine at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, and it's called Sensor Open System Architecture. So for host, like I mentioned, this is a NAVAIR effort. It's been going on since before I started. Um, it, it's, the host part is one piece of this whole encompassing architecture that the Navy which probably a lot of you are aware of, maybe you're not, is very, has been pushing very hard on um, programs and on the vendor community because the Navy and the government um, overall wants to see costs go down for how we develop our systems. And you guys will see in the following presentation um, a little plot. It's more a marketing plot, but it gives you an idea of how things are going out of control for the government and how they sort of um, acquire and field their systems. So the other parts of this, this overall architecture include something called FACE, which is a future airborne capability environment, which is a software um, application effort that's been going on even before HOST started at NAVAIR and in the Navy. It also includes something called FASTER, which I don't remember what the acronym is for, but what it is is a functional decomposition. So we, we, and you'll see this in one of the slides in one of the presentations. Basically, you decompose your system into these functional blocks. And the intent is that you take each of those blocks and you're able to rework them and use them in other types of configurations. So you break them down to their most fundamental level and you can say, okay, I wanna take these pieces, I'm gonna use them in this application, or I'm gonna use them in this application. But the point is you can reuse them. And so that's, 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 this, over, that's this whole thing that the, the Navy's working on right now. Okay, so some of the goals for host, which I'm sure you guys have seen this before, one is to break vendor lock. Um, as a government employee, I've become acutely aware that Nobody in the government wants to have to keep going back to the same vendor day after day, year after year. You've heard the droll, so I don't want to go through it. Uh, we want to leverage economies of scale. So this ties into what Greg had mentioned about and Michael had mentioned about, you know, the Army and the Navy and the Air Force all working together. We're, we're doing this as part of a hardware convergence effort. And you'll see this in, I think, in this presentation and the next one for SOSA, where we're looking at how we're all using these fundamental billing blocks in our systems. And we want to see how we can leverage that to increase push that we can give to you guys to say, look, you know, we're going to be building these X number of systems because you guys are all about how much is this going to get me in the bottom line. That's how we're, done it. we're going to do this. We want to shorten the fielding times. We don't want to spend years getting things developed, putting out in the field, and by the time it's out there, the technology is so over outdated, it's not even funny. Um, we want to lower the life cycle cost, which ties into the fielding times. We want to be able to get the systems out and not have to break the bank in doing it. And we want to promote reuse. So part of host in that it's leveraging OpenVPX is how can we take, say, an SBC that's being used on a certain platform like an MH60 and use it on something else, you know, whether it's um, an F-22 or it's JSF or whatever. So just give you a little development overview of the host timeline, and I'll talk about the specifics, what you see on the left-hand side of the graph, tier one, two, and three. The idea here is that over a period of time, with a five, 10, 15 year mark, we're gonna have a series of databases that would include things like um, modules, backplanes, boxes, um, applications that might come from FACE, uh, and, and those type of decomposition functions I mentioned to before for FASTER. So this just gives you a progression of where we intend to take this, where we hope to take it, and where by working with the community that develops these products, we can do this together. Okay, so some of the benefits, I'll ruddle through this pretty quickly. You know, old paradigm, new paradigm. Old paradigm is each vendor provide their own circuit card assembly. Um, what we want to have for host is a series of host standardized assemblies that people can use across different programs. Um, functionality that's custom, that's defined by the integrator. We want to have it standardized across the interfaces, which is the reason, one of the reasons why we're using OpenVPX as one way to do that through host. Custom set of cards, same thing again. Uh, the vendor will provide a custom set of cards that's been optimized and built for that specific function. What we want to do is have a standard set of cards that over a period of time we'll be able to use across different platforms and across different applications. 
And then finally, you know, enter card jumpers, the idea that you have these complicated systems that don't make it easy to, to say swap out cards or swap out LRUs if you define an LRU as a box. In this case, we want to use a lot, utilize defined interfaces over the back and the mid plane. So this is all also, what I mentioned earlier about standardizing, about maximizing reuse. Um, so the host standards, I mentioned in the plot, there are three, tier one, two, and three. Um, the tier one standard, and for those of you I didn't mention, there's a Vita 84 study group, which we started, um, which is focused on getting the community for Vita and everybody else involved in what host is and what host could be. So in, in the Vita 84, the, um, in the workspace site for Vita, there are copies of these specs, except for the tier three. The tier three is still in development. So the tier one is really an overarching architecture document. It kind of gives you the, the fundamental tenets of what host is, what host isn't. Uh, from an architectural point of view and a system point of view, so you can understand how you would build the system up. The thing that would be of most interest to you guys is the tier two, which is what they call focused on the core technologies. They, they define technologies as like OpenVPX, um, Compact PCI, they have VME here, which is outdated, I'm not sure why it's in there now. Um, but the thing here is to say, okay, this tier two would have, and there are tier two specs that talk about OpenVPX, so how host is going to use OpenVPX to develop their systems as these things are building blocks, so the modules and the backplanes to build up these boxes. And if any of you have seen a presentation I've done on SpaceVPX, it's the same idea. Each one of these are building blocks in which you can build up a whole system. And the idea is that you hopefully want to maximize your reuse and the functionality of those. Tier three, which is a component spec, um, and this is one that's in development right now. This is where we would go to an integrator or a board vendor or whoever's working on a program, they would take our tier two and tier one and develop a tier three specification that would say be platform specific for MH60 or something else like I mentioned before. The nice thing about this is that once you start to develop those platform specs, over a period of time as you increase the size of the database, you'll start to see similarities across each of those tier three specs and then you'll start to go, okay, I can take a tree of these and start to reduce it down to a lower level and have a tier three spec that would go across all those programs. So that's one of the other fundamental tenets of this effort. Um, so just a little stuff about the host for tier, uh, tier one host components. Again, this, like I mentioned, this is a box level spec. It works at the board level too. We all have, you've seen them before, we all have a series of modules that will help to build up the box. Um, they, host has its own um, lexicon of how they define things like transmission interfaces, but it's really all it is is they'll say, okay, well, here's a, a multi-participant protocol, but that actually is nothing more than 46.11 with IPMI. So it's really just a matter of getting used to the terminology. From a host management perspective, which is the other part of this for tier one, what I mentioned before, like management participants with the MPP, the host effort has both managers, which will manage what is going on in the box, which would be something like what you do through a utility management plane in OpenVPX. The participants would be each other, the other boards in the box that would be required to adhere to whatever's required for those functions. Um, so like autonomous subsystems that provide application for independent hardware management, logical control elements, and management participant protocol, which I mentioned before, the MPP. Okay, so for payloads modules, a lot of these is gonna look familiar. Um, initially when we were doing host, the host effort had looked to alter how the slot profiles were constructed. Um, that's changed over time to where you see this one, which I think, Greg can tell me if I'm wrong, exactly matches the 4F1Q2U2T. Um, there is, and I'll reiterate what Greg said, I'll, um, that we are trying to get rid of the user-defined space in this. We're also looking to define or recommend a set of user-defined signals, things like SATA, USB, HDMI, DisplayPort, things like that, that will be used presumably in the same places on the board so that we won't have the variability across the industry where you can get a board from vendor A and vendor B for all intents and purposes, they have the same signals, but they're in different spots on the connector. Also for 6U for host, we've, we are essentially taking um, these two slot profiles straight out of OpenVPX. We have not altered them at all. So we're, like I said, we're leveraging as much as we can off of what exists in the standard. Same thing to be said for 3U. Um, this is an existing slot profile in 3U. When you see um, in, in the next presentation, there are some variants across what we're doing with hardware convergence where you'll see that change, but we're also leveraging it. Same thing for the switch on the left. Now the odd man out is the one on the right. Um, Greg has talked to me about the one on the right. We've talked about it before. There is an existing 3U slot profile that is very close to this one. 
Um, we're currently trying to get the users for this to change that so we can leverage the, six u the three U slot profile of OpenBPX, but as of right now, this is the only variant in host that does not, is not reflected in OpenVPX, and it's platform specific. Last thing is uh, 46.9. There's been a lot of talk about leveraging what's been going on through 46.9, especially with um, 66 and 67 connectors. The host standard does leverage 66 and 67. Um, and as Greg mentioned before, in terms of proliferation of slot profiles, I just, just recently, within the last two weeks, I constructed um, slot profiles and module profiles for host based upon their use of 6667. And using the 3U and the 6U that you see in there right now, I came out with over 17 different variations for host alone for 6667. So there's a lot of variability in terms of slot profiles. You start using those connections as well. <clears throat> 